And we're about five miles northwest of downtown Tampa at beautiful Raymond James Stadium near Florida's Gulf Coast. Just a short time ago, the Buccaneers emerging from their tunnel to the roar of this frenzied crowd here in the Sunshine State. And we're in the big ship, and fittingly, everyone here ready to do battle as Tampa Bay gets ready to match up. Well, the Rams offense getting set to go back to work. They're coming off a 9-7 and seven finish last year, and that might have won the NFC East, but it wasn't good enough to win the West as they finished behind both the 49ers and the Seahawks as well. But what do you see from the Rams this year? Is this a team that kind of hit its peak with a run to Super Bowl 53 a few years ago, and now they're on the back side of that run? Or are they a group that can contend this year? I don't believe that they've hit their peak. I think that they've had to retool because, let's face it, they've lost some pretty good players. Todd Gurley is no longer there, but he wasn't playing at his peak before he left and went to Atlanta. On defense, they have the best player in the league in Aaron Donald. So he's still around wreaking havoc. And they'll get John Johnson back in the secondary and a second year out of Taylor Rapp at the University of Washington, another safety. So I think that there's an opportunity for this team to continue to get better. And the young quarterback, Jared Goff, he's got some people to throw to now. He can throw to Cooper Cup. He can throw to Robert Woods. And they drafted Van Jefferson out of Florida. This team remains dangerous, but it is a very difficult division. And how about their schedule to start things off, Barton? Yeah, you know, I mentioned the NFC, so I'm glad you brought that up because the way their schedule works out, four of their first five games are against the NFC East. They play the entire division with a game against Buffalo sandwiched in there. How about some applause for the defense there? They forced them to throw that one into coverage, and just like that, they're staring at a fourth down. Well done. So on fourth down, here's Johnny Hecker to punt it away. Back deep, Jadon Mickens. So possession goes over here on the punt, and the Bucs will get ready to go on offense. Well, the Buccaneer offense heading out, and I guess you'd say, Charles, for them, well, not much going on in Tampa Bay in the offseason, just quietly going under the radar, but not really. I mean, Tom Brady, the story of the offseason, trying to turn around a franchise coming off a 7-9 finish that has now missed the playoffs 12 straight years. And is there a team that you know in this league that went 7-9 last year that has such star power? You just mentioned Brady, of course. Bruce Arians is their head coach. He's a rock star. They added Bob Gronkowski at tight end. You've got Mike Evans and Chris Godwin out wide catching the football. Then the defensive side, well, Shaq Barrett led the league in sacks last year. And Jason Pierre-Paul, JPP, he didn't play a full season and nearly had double-digit sacks. If that defense plays really well, yes, they'll want to tamp down expectations, but they will contend for a division and possibly a Super Bowl berth. And that Super Bowl, of course, remember, will be in Tampa this season. Brand, I think we can see early on they're making a concerted effort to get him the football. So to me, that means they like the matchup that they have. They feel like he's better than the guys that are covering him. Two plays, two passes. We'll see if they go back to that well. Brady's throw there complete. And this time he's able to take it down to the 42. Seven yards there and a first down. First and 10 at the 42-yard line. First down is Brady. Toward the left sideline, but it's incomplete. The pro bowler, Chris Godwin, the intended receiver. And now it's second down. They've given up a few first downs on this drive, but getting the incompletion there, that should give them something to build on and maybe turn the tide. Brady's incompletion on first down leads to a second and ten. Throwing again. Brady. And he's going to be hit and taken down. Back right around the 48-yard line. The perennial pro bowler Aaron Donald gets the sack. I'm shaking my head and chuckling a little bit now, although it's not funny for anyone trying to block Aaron Donald. But you know all week long, they say to themselves, don't give up any sacks. And they just gave up one there. 
They double team him. They triple team him. They try and isolate and make sure that Aaron Donald can't get to their quarterback. And he always seems to find a way. He's not just a physical presence. He plays the game with a great football IQ. Nice play there to force the incompletion. And to me, one thing's for sure. When you're the underdogs and you're playing on the road, you absolutely have to get takeaways. You've got to get the ball from them. Yeah, win that turnover battle going to be key. They didn't get one there, but you get the feeling they keep making plays like that. They might just get a few. Yeah, once you get one, defensive teams think they come in bunches. And this one hits at the one, continues on into the end zone for a touchback. So the Rams coming back onto the field, their second drive of the game. And the last drive, their first drive, three and out. What changes here, if anything? I think it's making sure the guys that you trust the most with the ball, the biggest playmakers you have, that they touch it on this possession to try and get things moving. So get it to the horses. Without a doubt. They're the ones that typically end up in the end zone. Here's a throw, complete right side to start things out. And he is brought down at the 22 after a gain of two, and it brings up second down. That catch good for only a couple. Well, they were unable to make anything really big out of that, but it's not a bad idea to find your tight end and give him an easy completion and keep moving things forward. Almost as bread and butter as a good running back dive play. And now some motion before the snap. And this will be our first penalty of the night's proceedings. And that false start penalty is certainly not helping their cause here. Second down and long. Out of the gun. Goff gets this into the hands of the tight end Higby. And able to get this across the 20 before going out of bounds. That was an okay hookup there with his tight end, but unfortunately, they didn't get the kind of yards they had hoped for. That's going to bring up third down. And the box with an extra defender in the secondary now on third down. From the gun, here's gone. And that is incomplete. Every offense tells you they want to come out and start fast. That's not unusual at all. But this group, they've yet to get much rolling through their first two drives. It looks like they're going to have to give up the football again after this one. Here's Johnny Hacker now as he'll kick it away for the second time. Call it 46 yards on the punt, just a single yard on the return as he was covered quickly. And out will come the offense as they take over. Tampa Bay, they're getting ready to set up shop here for their second drive and hoping to do better than they did their last possession when they punted the football. Appeal to the vanity of your offensive line. Tell them that they control your fate. Leverage guys, win the line of scrimmage. If you do that, you start to win first down. You win second down. And guess what? You start accumulating first downs, and that's what they need in order to not pump the ball again. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. 16 yards right off the bat and a first down. Just the first quarter of a tackling going to be so important going forward. They've got to limit plays like that. And that's something when you see it happen early in the game and they don't get him on the ground, you can always tell that they were concerned about it going in. Because I can just tell you from my days, I remember being in college and worrying all offseason about our season open opponent, and they had a receiver that could shake and fake with the best of them. I tackled him on the first pass of the game, and the relief was incredible. Ended up having a pretty decent ball game. But if I had missed him, it would have been a long story. night. Following the pickup of four, here's second and six. Here's Ronald Jones, first carry for the USC man. And that play goes nowhere. Taken down, losing yardage at the 50, right at midfield. It'll go down as a two-yard loss, and it brings up a third down. And on third and eight, defensively, they're going to beef up the secondary. Six defensive backs. From midfield, here's Brady. He'll set up the screen to McCoy. And he will have first down yardage as he's brought down at the 41. Nine yards on the pickup there, and it keeps the drive alive. 41-yard line. 
Let's give a little credit there. The offensive play caller sends that the screen pass was available. Whenever you're getting a lot of heavy pressure towards your quarterback, that's when you're thinking about running the screen and using that pressure against the defense. And it worked very well there for a first down. That's caught by the big tight end, O.J. Howard. Complete. Now that's staying ahead of the chains. Really good pickup on first down, hitting the tight end there. Now brings up a second and manageable. Just found a hole in that zone. More muscle up front for this second and two. They've got three tight ends out there. Now Brady. Under a heavy rush and down he goes. You never want to give up a sack. From the O-line's perspective, they hate it for several reasons, especially because they felt like they let little brother down back there in the pocket. Oh, no doubt. They have a ton of pride, and they go into every job wanting to keep that guy clean. They want that uniform with no grass stains, no dirt, nothing on it, but it's really, really difficult. You're talking about some terrific athletes who are trying to put him on the ground. He's got Evans. And this is going to be another first down as the tackle's going to be made at the Rams 17-yard line. First catch there for Evans, good enough for a first down. Mike Evans has been so good downfield, I think that sometimes we end up taking him for granted. When you look back at what he's done each year in the league, he's been a 1,000-yard receiver each and every time. Now paired with the prolific Tom Brady, those numbers could really jump. Now a first down carry here for McCoy. And he's going to get forward for about five, but that may be coming back. What say you, Mr. Referee? So some holding over on the left side of that O-line. And I know for the guys trying to move those big defensive people, they'd love for them to stay in one spot. But they move around so quick and so fast that sometimes you just have to grab them. the gun it's Brady toward the center of the field but it's incomplete he was looking for Chris Godwin that time but it's going to be second down a lot of times it's that first read that you have maybe you get it in pre-snap and he locked in on his target but he was covered quite well and that one's incomplete second and 16 working from the gun it's Brady and that is incomplete. A lot of force bearing down on him there. He could not hang on. It's third down. That's what you're going to need to do against those big receivers. You got to get in there and get physical with them. That time he got in close, got in tight, and knocked the ball away. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. Brady to throw again. The L.A. defense... Up the snuff and coverage there. Pushes this to fourth down. So two third down conversions on this drive, but not able to get a third, and now they deal with fourth down. Now Ryan Suckup will come on and try the field goal. From the right hash, this from an even 40 yards out. And the 11-year veteran bangs it through. And the Bucs take a 3-0 lead. So the field goal there caps what winds up to be an 11-play drive. Well, partner, that's a lot of offense to run there to only get three points. So I just wonder, are they going to recycle those plays because they were successful in getting three? Or do you go to another section of the playbook trying to find ones that get you into the end zone and get you six? This will make it into the end zone. And they'll let that one go as it skips through the back of the end zone for a touchback. L.A. readies for its next possession. This is their third drive. Right now, maybe not about points, just about getting something. They haven't gotten a first down yet in this game. It's a mental barrier you don't think about until you go a couple of drives without getting a first down. Then all of a sudden, it looms big. It gets harder and harder to actually attain that first first down. 
They go over the middle, and it's complete to start the drive. And he's going to get a solid gain of nine before being brought down. Second and right at a yard. Brings up second and one. Cooper Cup had a big season in 2019. Also saw the emergence of tight end Tyler Higby for the Rams. He really jumped up his game about the last month of the season. But when it came time to ring the bell and get into the end zone, the Rams still look towards Cup. Ten touchdowns in 2019. Runs his routes with great precision and intelligence. And he'll bring it up here to right at the 40-yard line. Six yards to pick up, and that's a first down. I know what you're thinking out there. I know a lot of you are thinking, take a shot downfield. It's a great spot for it. I'd say maybe later in the game, definitely in the second half. But right now, I think they were just trying to get some momentum built. Get a first down, pick it up, and keep moving. Going to run the sweep here. This is Cup, and he will be brought down at about the 43 that time. Receiver. William Golston in on the stop. Let's just make this one succinct. Nice job there. All 11 guys on defense diagnosing the jet sweep and putting it down. On second and seven, Goff. That's complete to his tight end, Higby. That catch good for five. It's third down. Up into the last five weeks of the 2019 season, if you had said, who is Tyler Higby? You might have got some blank stares back, but down the stretch, only Julio Jones and Michael Thomas had more targets in the final month of the 2019 season. A breakout year for Tyler Higby. He expects to continue those types of numbers and beyond going forward. And this is going to lead to another first down as the tackle's made at the Bucs 24-yard line. Well, forget the run on third and one. They shock the D and rip off a pretty big play. So from Buccaneer territory now, it's first and 10 at the 24. A shotgun snap for Goff. Open man is Higby, the tight end. Five yards on the catch there, brings up second down. A gain of five. Not a big window to throw. Coverage wasn't too bad there. Yeah, they had him under wraps pretty well, but somehow able to muscle his way open and catch the ball. Second and five after the five-yard completion on first down. Again, golf. He'll get this one to cup complete. And he'll get him inside the 15 down to the 14-yard line. Six yards to pick up, and that's a first down. It's a game One thing you're hoping for when you run drag routes, down, you're able to hit a receiver in stride, and he can pick up a lot of yardage after the catch. But in this situation, the defense was effective, able to stop him before he could get a good head of steam going. This is Brown on the draw play, and he'll fight his way down right around the 12. Down the ball carrier. Tackle made that time by Vito Vea. Two yards on the pickup. It's second and eight. Three nothing after one on EA Sports. The last run good for two. Here's second and eight. Now gone. To the goal line, but it's incomplete. Woods will say he should have had it. And that takes us from second to third down. Fair to say, hasn't been his best game throwing the football, but also not getting a lot of help out there either. Yeah, you kind of you nailed it pretty well, you know. He's got to throw it better. Got to get more help. Obviously one that should have been caught. They got to find a way to bring those, those two elements together so they can make some progress in this one. He's got it. It's Higby. Touchdown, Rams. Tyler Higby. Tyler Higby. There to make the grab. And the Rams have taken the lead. You got to figure down by the goal line. This is where a tight end earns his money in the high traffic area. And he's able to work free in the middle of the end zone and grabs that one for a touchdown. And this is up and good to make it 7 3. Makes the score Rams 7, Buccaneers 3.
out is the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. And this will make it into the end zone. And they will not get a chance to return this one. It's through the back of the end zone for a touchback. Back now comes Tampa Bay. And last time able to get three. It's not what they wanted. They wanted six, but they got at least something. They mustered something out of the drive. They'll take it. Just I, I like the way you, you described it. Not ideal, but they'll take it. Anything to put some points on the board. But this time on offense, they don't even want to see the field goal kicker trot on the field. <laughs> they want that ball in the end zone. Yeah, they'll be going for six. He completes it to Evans. And he'll get this from the 25 to the 30 for a pickup of five. Five yards on the catch there brings up second down. Well, it's time for them to be good teammates right here. And what I mean by that is possess the ball for a little while. Get at least two first downs. Give their defense a chance to settle down a little bit after they give up a touchdown. To throw again on second down. Brady, that's caught by Howard. And he'll be brought down shy of the 40 at the 38-yard line. And the tight end is certainly a position built to move the chains because they can control space underneath. If they've got good hands, then, of course, they're a dynamic target. But one other thing is they're right in the sight lines of a quarterback on just about every play, and that makes it easier for the quarterback to pick him out and deliver. And he'll muscle his way up to the 43 for a pickup of right around five. He was brought down. That's a really nice job by them picking up the run blitz and detecting it and blocking it and turning it into a nice run. And a lot of times you think if you blitz a running play, you're going to smother it. But a lot of the blitzers, they come in a little bit high. They don't have great leverage, and they're easily blocked and turned to the side. Blitz coming, and down he goes. I'm starting to feel for that quarterback back there. I mean, you know me. Normally, don't have a lot of empathy for the QB, right? In this case, definitely. He's been on constant duress this entire game. I don't know how he's surviving back there. And to think, there's still a long way to go in this football game. So Brady and the Bucks need to work a little magic third and long after that last sack. Now Brady gets away with one. Lucky could have been intercepted, but it falls to the ground. The passing game not in sync here early, and now it's fourth down. Here's Bradley Pinion now, as he'll punt it away for the second time. This will be fielded at the 17. They'll net only 35 here following a 43-yard boot, 8-yard return. And the Rams will go on offense here for the first and 10. So now here are the Rams as their offense comes back out. And for them, a touchdown their last go around. Obviously, they'll be hoping to do that again. And when you start plotting for this drive, when you start thinking to yourself, okay, what are we going to do? You don't go away from what you did before because that worked. But you have to be prepared for wrinkles and ca rush coming, and he's taken down. Shaquille Barrett put that sack by his name in the stat sheet. I think it's overstating it to say that he came out of nowhere. But did anyone see 19 and a half sacks coming from Shaq Barrett last year? And even after he became an acknowledged guy that you had to block, he still was able to get to the quarterback. Expects to continue on that level, and there he is. Adding it as he throws and the ball is out. It's a live football. And he returns it to the end zone. A fumble recovery touchdown for the box. So the defense forces the fumble. They get the score. And a guy on defense becoming offensive there, Charles. And you know they love that. Any guy on defense loves to pick up the ball and have it in his hands and try and score himself. In this case, that's exactly what happened. We'll be singing in the shower post game. And it's through, and that makes the lead 10-7. Makes the score, Buccaneers 10, Rams 7.
Brad, so here's the kickoff now as he'll get it again following that fumble return for a score. On the return, it's Simba Webster. And he'll go down as this drive will start at the 25-yard line. And now out on the field, here comes Los Angeles. And they've got to be still reeling from the events of a moment ago. What a turn on that last play. You're knocking on the door. You're about to take it in. You think you're going to get some points on the board. Instead, you cough it up and watch them take it the rest of the way to the opposite end zone. That's a two-score swing that you just gave up. And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. He was looking for Cooper Cup there, but it'll be second down. And that one's going to be off target and incomplete. An incomplete pass leads to second and 10 from the 25. Goff now looking to throw. Complete Jefferson to target. And he's going to be dropped following a pickup of seven past the 30 to the 32. They get seven out of that, so they're left with a third and three. I always laugh when people say, what's the toughest route to defend? And I'm like, any of them, especially if it's a good receiver, that makes things very difficult. But when you're running a drag route, something short, shallow, going through defenders, using guys almost as, as screens in order to get open, that makes things tougher, guys trying to get to the football. It's a gain of four, and it gets him the first. On third down, that's a good job of situational football and understanding where the first down marker was and getting there. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. Back to throw, gone. Now that'll be caught by Cup. And he'll be taken down, but not before he works it past the 50. It'll be a first down for the Rams there on a pickup of 18. First down. Well, remember, they tried to give him the ball and let him run on the last play, but I think the light bulb went off in their play caller's mind, and this time they get it to him the more conventional way, and it's much more successful as well. So from Buccaneer territory now, it's first and 10 at the 47. Oh, the Buccaneer pressure too much. Down he goes. And Dalvin Sue with a sack. We've seen that a ton since he entered the league in 2010. And we say it all the time, have to be able to get rid of the ball sooner than that. You have to help your offensive line out. They're going to protect you as best they can. And if you get three to five seconds to throw the ball, they're doing a really nice job. But when you hold it and give up a sack, you're really almost discrediting their work. And he'll push his way up to about the 44 here. Kevin White on the tackle. I do know from experience that when you slow down someone's running game, you're now doing the dictating on defense. And guess what? Now you're getting ready to tee off on their quarterback because they have to throw it all the time. But you still have to be alert for the draws and other plays of that nature to make sure you don't get hurt. Third and long. It's gone. And that is incomplete. Not much going on this drive. Looks like they're going to have to punt it away, CD. And right now, I know a lot of their fans are screaming for the OC to change things up, get away from what he's been calling. Sometimes you just need better execution of the plays that have been called. Here's Johnny Hacker now as he's on to punt for L.A. He's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. And that hurts. If it was running into the kicker, wouldn't be a first down. Roughing, it is a first. And just think about the differences between the two. Running into the kicker almost feels inadvertent, just a small tap, so to speak. But when you rough him, usually bodies are hitting the ground and flying all different places. And the difference is five yards or 15. And in this case, that's a big play. On first down, it's gone. And they're going to get him. He's taken down for a sack back at the 47-yard line. Big Vita Vea pushing his way through to wind up with a sack. Oh, you know, that did not feel good. Vita Vea with the sack there. And we know he's a big-time presence on the defensive line, especially against the run. But he'll surprise you with his quickness and his upfield agility in order to get to the quarterback. If you're blocking him, it's going to be a long afternoon or evening, a tough proposition. Four yards on the completion, and it sets up a third down. 
Well, the strategy was evident there. Get it to your tight end and make it a one-on-one -on -one play with a cornerback. Who's usually going to win that one? The tight end, but not there. Not in this situation. How about the corner defeating that logic and making a really nice tackle? Here's Goff. Now they set up the screen. That's complete. And he'll be taken down well before the first at about the 36-yard line. It'll be a gain of 12, but it will also lead to fourth down. Instead of throwing it downfield, Charles, they just tried to dump it underneath there. you like the call? I do. I think it's a high percentage play because you get the completion, and what you're counting on is your back to use his legs and his elusiveness to make people miss and pick up the first down. In this case, it didn't happen. That's running out of steam, and it won't get there. He left it just short. No good. And this score will stay right where it is. NFL kickers nowadays, they make things look so easy because normally from this range, about two out of three. And this is not an easy kick. Yeah, 20 years ago, you get where he was in that 50 range, maybe a little over. And it's a big kick, but now we just, if they leave it short, you're like, whoa, what happened? And that's, that's what we have here. Yeah, you're right. 20 years ago, we were saying run some more plays and get closer. Now we think they're definitely within range, and you're exactly right. When it comes up short, there has to be something that went wrong because they have plenty of leg. After the loss to start out, here's second and 11. To throw is Brady. And the Rams got him. They bring him down. Okay, you know my bias is about to come out here. A lot of people think that the offense is just moving in the wrong direction. I'd say they're moving in the right direction because the defense is pushing them back. Former defensive guy. Now, as a quarterback, third and long, you really got to rally the troops here, don't you? Yeah, you do in a big way. And what else do you have to look out for? More pressure coming at you because it seems to be working pretty well. On third and long, it's Brady. And this is caught by Evans. And able to rip off a big chunk of yardage before being dropped inside the 40. How about that? They weather the storm of a third and 17 to pick up the first. Good catch there by Mike Evans. And his ability to get downfield and create big plays is something that Tom Brady hasn't had on the perimeter in the last few seasons. Mike Evans often fools defenders with his speed because he's so long, people think he can't be that fast. But he is, and combines it with... Oh, he can't get away, and Brady will go down. There's a little bit of defense right there. Nickel set, five defensive backs. They just snuffed out every route that was going. Quarterback never got rid of the football. Pass protection has been a problem all night long as they come up facing second and a bundle. Shotgun now for Brady. He'll find Miller. That's complete. And he'll get it inside the 40 to the 39. They'll wind up getting 10 back as that sets him up for third down. The goal for any offense versus his own defense, find the holes where guys are available and put the ball on the receiver before any defender can step up and fill it. They did it well there. Perfectly executed crossing route. Brady going to fake the give to Jones and set up to throw. The L.A. defense up the snuff in coverage there. Pushes this to fourth down. By the way, I got to apologize because I just realized for about the last four or five plays, I'm eking over in your territory up here in the booth. My bad. I'm going to get back over to my spot. Yeah, and we're not talking about our on-air commentary. I mean, what is all this extra paper? I mean, this is unusual for you. My bad. Normally, you run a really tight ship. What's going on here? Just like that incomplete pass, I'm going to try to tighten things up here for this next play. The Rams offense now making their way out to take over. Last time out, they had that long 50-plus yard field goal that they missed. And I'm sure on their sideline, they're thinking to themselves, OK, do we still want to try one if we're in that position again? And I would dare say that the answer would be yes. They're going to have a lot of confidence in their kicker. But just to be on the safe side, I'm sure they told their offensive guys, can we get a little bit closer yeah, this time? Closer. Yeah, well, you know, I'd rather get in the end zone first and foremost. But if all else fails, less of a field goal attempt for him. Three yards the gain there, second down. To Cooper Cup. It's a pickup of three. 
brings up second and seven at the 21-yard line. Looking to throw again on second down. Golf over the middle into traffic, and that's complete. Well, your QB's been sacked four times in the game already, and they're the holding goal. And you know darn well the offensive line coach is frustrated and upset that he's been hit that many times already. He doesn't really care that they hold now. Just don't let him get hit anymore. To throw on second down is gone. And the open receiver, it's Robert Woods. And up to the 35 before they're able to knock him down. It's a pickup of 17 and a first down. And when you think of the Rams and their passing game, sometimes Robert Woods gets overlooked. But if I told you he led the team in targets for the last two years and had 139 last year, would you be surprised? Probably. But now with Brandon Cooks gone from the roster, they'll look in his direction maybe even more. And I just love the intensity that he plays the game with. It's a gain of nine. In so many ways, throwing the hitch route is actually one of the safer things an offense can do. Get the ball out to the receiver as fast as possible. Hope he's got man-to-man -man coverage and hope that his athleticism wins on the perimeter. Clock continuing to roll as the Rams try to get going again. Over the middle, and it's incomplete. Intended target there, Malcolm Brown. And it's third and short. You can tell they wanted to get that ball downfield, but they had nothing working in the secondary, so he dropped it off to the running back. That one ended up incomplete. They tried to throw on second down, unsuccessful. Now it's third and one. To the air again, gone. And this is going to be incomplete. That close on third down, I think everybody probably expecting a run. Instead, they go to the air on third and short yardage. I realize this is a passing league, and they're liable to throw the ball on any down and distance. But that short, I do question the call. Run the football and pick it up. Here's Johnny Hacker now as he's on to punt for L.A. He's averaging just under 50 yards a punt as he gets this away. And a great job on special teams to down it as this will be marked out inside the five-yard line. That is how you flip field position. That's an absolute bomb of a punt. Downs it inside the five-yard line. Absolutely ideal. And from that position, you're hoping to get it down inside the 15, inside the five. Superb. They're coming out with a jumbo package to start the drive. They'll start the drive with a carry by Jones. Now the Bucks going to use the first of their timeouts as they get the stoppage with just under 50 seconds remaining in half number one. And Tampa Bay trots out there now. The last run got a couple. Here's second and eight. Operating from the gun, Brady, he finds McCoy. The Bucks going to go ahead and use the second of their timeouts as the clock will stop with 45 seconds to go in the first half. The Rams calling on their nickel set here defensively for third down. From the gun, it's Brady. He gets it into the hands of Gronkowski, complete. So he got free of one tackle, but couldn't do a whole lot else. The Rams going to go ahead and use the first of their timeouts as they stop it here with just under 40 ticks to go in this first half. Here's Bradley Pinion now, as he's on to punt for the fourth time tonight.
It'll be a 39-yard punt, no return. And possession will switch hands first and 10. And the Rams now coming out on the field. And with time quickly fading here in the second quarter, not sure how aggressively, offensively they want to play this. I think we'll find out just how much they trust their guys in this situation if they decide to take a shot. Good starting field position for them here as they come up first and 10 on their side of midfield at the 47. And he's able to take it across midfield before going out of bounds. For a second there, I thought that might break big. Screen pass. Looked like it was coming together. Looked like there was an opening. Still ended up with a solid game. Able to get seven on that first down pass play. Second and three. Golf. Incomplete, but a penalty flag is down in the backfield. Let's get the call. So apparently some grabbing there in the middle of the O-line. I've often wondered why that doesn't happen more often for guys that play center. Having to snap the ball and then trying to get your hands into the proper position, that's difficult to do. He got caught that time. They'll come up now on a second and long after the hold. From the gun, here's Goff. Back to Brown, this time complete. And out of bounds on the other side of midfield at the 45. Without the previous penalty, that would have been a first down. Instead, it's just a gain of 10. So third and two, and I count six defensive backs out there. Gone. And that's going to be incomplete. 12 seconds left. Intended for Malcolm Brown. Brings up fourth down. Here's Johnny Hacker now. He's been terrific so far. Averaging 50 yards of boot so far as this one's away. And that is much too long. That's into the end zone for a touchback. Here comes the Tampa Bay offense now heading back out onto the field. Time for a final kneel down or a safe run, and then they can head to the locker room with a lead. Yeah, or they can even run a screen. You know, something they feel is somewhat safe that might actually pop and turn into a big play, that's what you usually run in this situation. Or go four verticals because why not? Because you're feeling it, right? <laughs> you're just feeling it. So we've hit halftime. Just a field goal separating these two teams at the break. As we send you a stone's throw away across I-4 to Orlando, they're standing by as Jonathan Coachman, ready with our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach? Fielded in the end zone. And the half will begin with a touchback. And Brady and the Buccaneers here first and 10 at their own 25-yard line. Out of the gun, he'll throw. That's complete to his receiver, Godwin. And he's going to be dropped following a pickup of seven. Past the 30 to the 32. Seven yards, the pickup there. Well, whenever you talk about players that really broke out in the 2019 season, you better add Chris Godwin to that list. Over 1,300 yards receiving, nine touchdowns. He was second among receivers last season receiving yards per game at 95. This guy combines great body control, excellent strength, and terrific route running ability to become a really big downfield threat. This has to go down as one of the simpler routes in the playbook, but oh so effective. Nice completion there, keeps the sticks moving. On first down. It's McCoy, and he'll push this forward only to about the 42-yard line. Give him a couple on the carry there, second and eight. Oh, that's a real nice job there by the defensive front. They just engaged and held their ground. But how about the guy who made the play? We often talk about whether they take a good first step or not. Many times, you just don't take any step. Just get your feet moving, get your body going, and then once he made the read, he was able to make the play. The throw on second down by Brady is incomplete. This has certainly been a physical game so far. Limited scoring opportunities for both sides. And there's another chance that goes unfulfilled.
So the failure to connect on second down, that leaves him staring up here at a third and eight. Working from the gun, it's Brady. It's complete, it's Miller. And he will be very close to a first down, but I see the close fist of the referee, and that means fourth down. So much about offense is what we call hidden yardage. You know, you, you throw the ball to someone, they catch it, and then they can make a big play. You know, they create a play, run after catch. They did a really nice job there of limiting that and keeping them from a first down. Yeah, stopped him in his tracks. And this punt will go out of bounds. I think it'll be inside the 25, and it will. Right at the 24-yard line is where they'll spot it. Now the attention turns back to the Rams' offense as they get ready for their first possession of the second half. These guys had to punt their last possession, and that's become too familiar of a refrain. Too many of these drives just wound up going nowhere. But you know how in baseball, when the pitcher gets a base hit and he's on base, they bring his jacket out to him to keep him warm? A lot of times the punter goes to the sideline and puts on sweatpants or a wrap over his leg to keep it warm. He might need a massage. And down he goes, a bucket air sack. And Dominican Sue able to drop in that time for his second sack of the evening. My man, it's been a rough night for that offensive line, and it's only getting rougher. Five sacks now that they've given up in this contest so far. It feels like the witching hour out here, doesn't it? Okay, stupid question. What's the witching, witching hour? Yeah, the witching hour. That's when everything goes haywire late at night. Now a throw here on second down, and that's complete. A good pick up there, 13 yards as they get closer for third down. They like going to him in the slot. He catches another one. I think this comes under the heading of until they stop him, why not go back to him? He has something going really well. Great working relationship with the guy throwing the ball, and they keep making the connection. Big play coming up. Here's third and ten. I would expect to see some pressure here. The pressure drops off as they'll look to throw. This will be caught by Brown. And this effort will not get it done. He stopped well short of the first down at the 29. He did his best to just get four out of that, but not enough. And now fourth down. Here's Johnny Hacker now, as he'll come on for his fifth kick of the night. His first punt, 45 yards. This looks good as well. On the return is Mickens. 51 yards on the punt there. And the offense will take over with a new set of downs. Back now comes Tampa Bay. And a tight game after punting last time. See if they can get something going on this drive. As they head to the field now, with the game this close, you've got to feel there's a sense of urgency for them going on offense right now. But they have to do it without letting panic creep in and affect their play. Here's a throw caught by Gronkowski. And from the 25, they work this to the 29, a gain of four. But the Brady-Gronk connection, certainly something to watch here with the Bucs in 2020. Of Tom Brady's 541 touchdown passes coming into 2020, Gronk's 78 were the most of any receiver. And they'll work from the 29 on second and six. From the gun, Brady quickly to Gronkowski. That's caught. And he's able to take this one up to the 35-yard line. Seven yards there and a first down. The start for them near flawless. Defense gets them a three and out. Two quick pass connections on offense. So that's how a team works together. Just what you described. Get them the ball, give them a little momentum. And they're capitalizing off of that. Thanks a lot, guys. They'll run on first down. McCoy. And he's got it up over the 40 to the 41. It's a six-yard gain on the ground, and that'll make it second and four. Now, Brandon, that's the way you want to run the football. There should almost be quote bubbles above the offense right now. Bam, boom, biff. That's how they feel good about moving the football. From the 41. Brady looking for Godwin, and he's got him complete. And he'll be taken down at the 46-yard line. A gain of five, good enough for the first down. I think that's a big pickup for a first down because when you run a drag route against zone, you're sometimes asking for trouble because you might run into a defender. Yeah, well, there they ran into a first down, executed it to perfection. Now a first down carry by Jones. And he works his way forward for about four up to the midfield stripe. Right at On every play call, you realize it's not going to go for a touchdown. So a lot of your calls, 
are setting things up for maybe later in the game, trying to establish the inside run, run with toughness now, hopefully get to the perimeter later, and let's face it, you could do worse than a four-yard run on first down. From midfield, here's Brady. It's complete. He's got Gronk. And he'll get it down here to the 43. Seven yards there and a first down. And there's a nice catch there by Rob Gronkowski. We all know the story. Came out of retirement, got himself traded to Tampa Bay from New England in order to reconnect with his favorite quarterback. And no one has caught more Tom Brady touchdowns than Gronk, and he expects to add to that total in Tampa Bay. A first down run by Jones, not going to work out as he's hit and dropped behind the line of scrimmage. Another big play there by Aaron Donald, the NFL's defensive player of the year in 2017 and 18. We know he can rush the passer. He's also dominant in the run game. The quickness for a man his size often defeats the offensive lineman trying to block him. Now on second and 13. Brady, he finds his target, it's Evans. Brady's back. They'll wind up getting 10 back as that sets him up for third down. A gain of 10 makes it third and three. The eighth play of the drive coming up. It's third and three. Operating from the gun, Brady. This for his running back, McCoy. They'll get only a yard out of that, and it'll bring up fourth down. Partner, I think that completion takes the definition of dink and dunk to a different level, doesn't it? It does, and the defense was right there, kind of played into their hands. So the kick from here on a field goal would have been right at 53 yards, but instead, offense out there. They're going for it. And he picks up the first before he's taken down at the 29. They're able to keep the drive alive seven yards that time, and the decision to go for it proves to be a good one. The fourth down run successful. Now they look to pay it off on first down. They'll keep it on the ground with McCoy this time. And only able to muster a couple down to about the 27. Aaron Donald. Certainly a nice job there by the defense rallying to the football and getting him on the ground. But I think the play gets made by the defensive front. Because if they can't get upfield, their job is to go ahead and get low, almost get into a ball sometimes, stack things up, and make it difficult for the runner to find a hole. From the 27, Brady, left side here. That's complete to Godwin. Six yards is the pickup, and that'll lead to a third down. When you see zone defense and you know you've got a drag route on as your primary call, you've got to be really careful as a passer about how far you let your guy go because he might wander into some tough coverage. The Rams go nickel here defensively on third. They'll try and run for it with Jones. And he's going to have a first down here as he gets this one to the 17-yard line. Just four yards on the pickup, but that's good enough to extend the drive. Now, they struggled to get him rolling on the ground in the first half, and that's sort of continuing here in the third quarter. Yeah, but I don't think it's time to abandon the running game. I would say keep feeding the horse, and I believe he'll eventually reward them, especially as we get deeper in the game. Brady's throw there complete, and he's brought down just outside of the 10 at the 11. A gain of six there on first. Good throw, good catch, but I really like the route. The drag and being able to run away from defenders, hard to stick with them for that long. Yeah, better against man than zone, or? Better against man, because now you're running away from someone, and you're not running into a defensive player in another zone. Throwing again on second down. Brady, his pass caught at the four. And the stop will come inside the five at the four. First down, Tampa's Brady hooks up with Howard. That was a route run, not just with dexterity, but with intelligence. Found the hole in the zone, made sure the quarterback saw him, and was able to make the sure catch and flip the down marker back to one. Here's Brady to throw. And he's into the end zone. Touchdown, Buccaneers. Tom Brady to his old Patriot pal, Rob Gronkowski, as the Buccaneers tack on to their lead. 
circle that drive because that might be one to remember. Well executed to give him a little cushion. Well, let's take it into the boxing ring. You talk about them commanding it, keeping the fight where they wanted to, whether it was in the center of the ring or putting them on the ropes because it was jab, jab, jab. And finally, the haymaker to put that drive away. Extra point up and good by Suckup. And his guys will take a 10-point lead. Turn comes Webster. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here right at the 30-yard line. Here's a Los Angeles offense as they get set to take possession. And right now these guys, they're shuffling a little bit, maybe doubting because three straight drives have ended with him punting the football away. Yes, yeah, so you start pointing fingers at each other a little bit, asking a lot of questions. What are you seeing? What are you getting? Maybe trying to narrow down your playbook a little bit and maybe get simpler rather than more complex in order to try and fashion together a drive. And he's got a good gain of seven up to the 37. He's brought down at the 37-yard line. A seven-yard pickup brings up second and three. And that is going to do it for this third quarter of action. We'll return with more after this. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. So they'll come up after the gain of seven on a second and three. A shotgun snap for gone. Looking middle, and it's incomplete. Cooper Cup was his intended target, and it's third and short. Third. Had an open man that time, but ended up putting a little too much heat on it, don't you think, partner? Absolutely, just needed a touch more air under it. Instead, he fired an absolute bullet. The Rams on third down. They're hitting at just 30%, three for 10. Here, it's third and three. They'll run on third down with Brown. And he will have first down yardage as he's brought down at the 41. They're able to convert with a gain of four. Now, yes, a two-possession game, but a good chunk of time on the clock, so they have the ability still there to run it on second and short, but maybe they need to pick it up a bit. You're right. They did pick up the first down there, but they, as you mentioned, they have to pick up the pace now because it's a two-possession game. They've got to get there twice to make sure they have a chance to win. Now they go screen. It's complete. And he'll lose yardage on the play back at the 37-yard line. Not what they had in mind there. That's going to go as a loss of four. Boy, how good has this defense been seemingly all game long? I really think right from the first snap, I think you're really on to something there. In this passing game, it just can't get off the ground. And that play, it wound up losing yardage. Goff throwing complete to Cup. They get 11 back on that one. It leads to third down. Fired that one in there, able to make connection on a nice in route. With those faster passes when they're going that fast, any hesitation as a quarterback that the deflection, if you miss, might be bigger and lead to an interception? Yeah, and the deflection works both ways. Maybe a defender gets a hand in the way and it pops in the air. And sometimes you throw it so hard your receiver can't handle it, and he pops it up in the air for the defenders to grab as well. But a moot point there is they were able to connect. And this is going to lead to another first down as the tackle's made at the Bucs 39. Goff hitting Woods for a Rams first. All right, this is the time of the game where they're down a couple scores, and they've really got to get some yards in chunks, and they know the defense doesn't want to give those up, but they've got to find a way to take them anyway. Now the question is, can they string a few of those together? Throwing again is Goff. Complete. Jefferson the target. So a nice job to break the one tackle, but not much daylight after that as he's brought down. It's a gain of five. Bring one thing I think that's safe to say defensively, the tackling's been really good. And because of that, it's been very, very hard for them to move the ball because you're not getting the benefits of run after catch. They're tackling them almost on the spot. That means you have to run extra plays, harder to move it. To throw again on second down. Golf. They'll try and set up the screen. It's complete. 
and he's able to get it down to the 25-yard line. Nine yards to pick up there, and it's a first down. Well, they certainly had success throughout this contest getting him the ball in the passing game, and there he picks up another first down. Whatever they saw going into this one, they've been able to capitalize on it, and no adjustment has been made to take it away. On first down, gone. This one brought in by Jefferson. A gain of six there on first. To Van Jefferson. It's a pickup of six. Brings up second and four at the Bucks' 19-yard line. Six yards was the pickup on the last completion, so here's second and four. Off throwing again. And that one, his first incompletion in his last six passes. And it's third down. The storm windows get a lot tighter near the end zone, don't they? And here's the thing. You already probably have three points in your hip pocket. You force a throw here and give up an interception, you come away with nothing. Especially tough in the middle third of the field where he threw that one. This offense has converted two third downs on this drive already. This is third and four. Got an open man finding Jefferson. And he takes it down to the 13 and picks up the first. That good for six as they keep this drive right on rolling. And in a two-score game, obviously, every play, every third down, like we saw there, magnified big pickup. It was a huge pickup. What they really want, though, is to not even get to third down. They've got to maximize time and conserve as much as possible. To the right side, and complete to Jefferson. And he's able to work it here to the eight-yard line. Jefferson. Five yards on the catch Arcana there brings up second brings down. Up second and five at the eight-yard line. Second and five from the eight. Again, golf. This will be caught at about the six. And he's going to be brought down just shy of the five at the six. It's that throw good for only a couple. It brings up third down. That time they hit him out of the slot on the drag. And that route takes some fortitude from the guy running it because he knows he's going through the briar patch, as I like to call it, right? He's trying to work his way through all that traffic, and people want to put a little contact on it. Really well done. And he's going to take this one in for a Rams touchdown. The connection there, Goff to Cooper Cup. And the Rams are able to get back within a touchdown. So they fought half the battle here, but they're still down. Plenty of work still left for them, but they delivered in the first step in their comeback attempt. And this is up and good to make it a 17-14 game. Makes the score, Buccaneers 17, Rams 14. So just a three-point game now as they send this one away. This one fielded at the five. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here right at the 30-yard line. And Tampa Bay trots out there now. Their lead back down to one score after the touchdown a moment ago. First down's a must on this drive as they start out here first and ten. This has been all that we'd hoped for. Two of the game's all-time great QB slugging it out in a one-score game here in the second half. First and ten. They'll start out on the ground with Jones. And he'll have a gain of three to the 33. The ball carrier. Offensively with the lead, you want to run the ball, keep the clock going, but you also want to still kind of be in attack mode too, right? So how do you do that and not come back on your heels? Yeah, think about all the practices we've watched where they have that tempo period to go over things just like this where they describe the scenario, 
tell you what they're looking for and make sure that they're still attacking, yet at the same time not going so fast as to leave too much time on the clock. He finds McCoy, and he'll bring it up here to right at the 40-yard line. Seven yards there and a first down. Well, that should be a reminder defensively, and I think it's a reminder to myself because you just can't sell out to stop the run. There's still enough time that this offense can move the football through the air, even on first and second downs, and they obviously picked the right spot to throw the ball there. And down he goes on the pressure from the Rams defense. This has been a tough one for this offensive line. It appears almost like they've been on roller skates this entire game, the way they've been pushed around. Six sacks given up in this one. Pass protection has been a problem all night long as they come up facing second and a bundle. Shotgun now for Brady. He completes it to Evans. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. But a nice little game. They'll wind up getting 10 back as that sets him up for third down. Tell you what, he's been able to put the ball in some tight spots all game long. That throw, no different. Yeah, a lot of people call it a gutsy type of a throw. I think he looks at it as, I can do it. So it's not that big of a deal to me. And I'm going to keep firing. Drops it to Jones in the flat. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets in the enemy territory. It's another 10 yards on that one and another first down. Couldn't just sit on it here, could they? Had to throw the ball on third down. Got the big completion in the pickup. Fresh set of downs now. They've got to feel great. And defensively a backbreaker. First and 10, and they've got three tight ends out there. A jumbo package look. And they're going to take it all the way down and just take the delay. He didn't seem in a rush. I guess they just didn't know where the play clock was. I think you're right about that because there was no hurried movements there, right? No up-tempo at all. Clock just ran out. I think he was as surprised as maybe his bench was. Now they need 15 yards on this series after the delay of game. First and 15. From the gun, it's Brady. Throwing the out route incomplete. That's McCoy. And he gets this to the other side of midfield across the 45 before going out. These guys are running offense like you drive. The pedal is down. Stomp down. How about that? Back-to-back -back completions. They are rolling. So much for being conservative and running that football. Line of scrimmage, the 43 on second and four. Now a throw for the left sideline, and he's got it. And he'll go down here at the 35-yard line. That one, a first down pickup of eight. And defensively, they were in zone coverage there. Do you have to be a little careful you're losing playing against a good quarterback like he is to not play too much zone? Yeah, you have to be careful about how much time you're giving up. I think it's a good point you just brought up. So maybe if you still want to play zone, you go to a zone blitz scheme, and you can drop anyone out of your defensive front, defensive end, defensive tackle. It doesn't matter. You just exchange someone to bring more pressure towards the quarterback and still try and cover downfield. It's a gain of 16, first down Tampa Bay. Well, that certainly has to feel good. It's not all the time that the play caller should get all the credit. Sometimes I think in the huddle, the quarterback just says, hey, who's going to make a play for me? I just need something right here. And the end result there, nice first down. Drive keeps moving. And all the way down inside the five to the four. Another nice gain. That's now 30 yards between those last two plays. I have to chuckle to myself a little bit, Brandon, because right now, I could be in that huddle with that offensive line. I know exactly what they're saying. If you call a pass play here, we're going to call a timeout. Run the football. <laughs> We've got control of this thing. Get in behind us and let's go. Their time to shine. And Evans calls it in. Touchdown, Bucks. Four yards on the touchdown grab. And the Buccaneers here finding a way to stretch their lead. Well, that was absolutely ideal for them, wasn't it? Trying to salt this game away. I think one of my kids just graduated in the amount of time they had the football. That was absolutely impressive. Everybody wants those salt away the game drives. What makes them successful? Well, when you're able to mix run pass, when you're able to control the football and stay ahead of the chains, I'm using every cliche I know, <laughs> but that's how you get it done because you're not taking negative plays. 
and that way you're able to run what you want to run when you get a chance to call it. And his guys will take a 10-point lead. They're down here in the fourth, and that personal foul penalty is not going to help. No, in these types of situations, players will tell you that's extra intensity. From where we sit, it's actually frustration, not a good play. After the roughing penalty on the PAT, they'll kick off from 15 yards further upfield. And this will be a touchback as Ed sails over the end line. So Goff and the Rams down 24-14. 2.15 remaining. They have all three timeouts and the two-minute warning, but they need two scores. Goff on first down. Oh, it's a screen pass. That's complete. No gain on the screen there. It's second down. Malcolm Brown. No gain on the play. Brings up second and 10 at the 25-yard line. but for no gain, stopped right at the line, so it's second and 10. Goal. And incomplete. They were trying to go to Brown once again, and it's third down. From the snap, he certainly looked like he knew where he wanted to go with the ball, but surprise, that guy was covered. So that took his attention elsewhere to no avail. They come up to the line now, facing a third and 10 after the incompletion. It got a man, it's Woods. And now look at this, big gain, but a fumble. And it's picked up by the Buccaneers. So good starting field position for him here as they come up first and 10, right at the 50-yard line. They try and run on first down, but to no avail. Tackle for a two-yard loss in the backfield. The Rams gonna go ahead and use the first of their timeouts as they'll talk things over prior to this upcoming second down play. Here comes the Tampa Bay offense now heading back out onto the field. And a few kneel downs should come very close to finishing this one off, depending on whether or not we see any defensive timeouts. They still have two, but using them would just be prolonging what's really already been decided. Again, it's Jones. And he's going to take this one across midfield and into Ram territory. Now the Rams will signal for a timeout their second as he'll talk it over here before what'll be an important third down. Out of the shotgun, it's McCoy. And past the 35, he'll be dropped a yard or two shy of the 30. The Rams going to be forced to use their third and final timeout. And they'll be disappointed to have to burn one there after giving up the first down. Not totally home free yet, but it's looking good as they come up first and 10. Game in hand, the offense takes the knee. On second down now, it's Jones. Stops short of the 25, and that second effort got him a couple extra. He was he gets him a little over half of what they needed. Now they're looking at a third and five. Charles, why didn't they just take the knee there? You're asking the question that I'm asking as well, because we've seen a lot of football where coaches decide maybe they get a little greedy. I don't know if they're doing it for stats or for what reason. We've seen it happen in college. How about in the NFL? 
the miracle of the Meadowlands. All they had to do was take a knee and the game was over. The Giants ran it one more time, ball popped free. Philadelphia picks it up and wins the game. What year was that? 1978, I think it was in November. Ryan suck up on for the field goal. And Charles, I think when the schedule comes out, all teams, no matter where they're predicted to finish, talking about protecting your home turf, they were able to do that here in this one. Similar to a tennis match, right? Not letting them break your serve. That way you hold on to it. They got it done, and they feel very good about that victory. So that'll do it for us, for my partner, Charles Davis, and all the hard-working men and women on our crew. I'm Brandon Gaunt. You've been watching the NFL right here on EA Sports. The Bucks are winners here as we say so long from Tampa.